the DJ, I Hate Models. I Hate Models ran into a bit of bother at a Marseille festival. I Hate Models ran into a bit of bother at a Marseille, Marseille festival in France. He got into a bit of trouble. As the headline says here on RA, Marseille festival Le Bon Air cancels I Hate Models set due to a private jet request. Bad boy. Bad fucking boy. I Hate Models will no longer perform at a Marseille festival Le Bon Air this weekend. The festival broke news on Instagram earlier on May 15th, this happened a while ago, implying that the French artist's demands of travelling there by a private jet was the reason for the cancellation. I'm not going to lie. I don't like this. I don't like this. It's almost like virtue signaling for the festival to like make it known that they're not going to, he's not going to come and not to do that what every other festival does or every other club does if a dj can't you know come to the festival or can't come to their gig they usually make up a lie unforeseen circumstances personal reasons blah 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 you, and usually when they say that it usually has to do with maybe the dj is tired maybe they, they got too high and they can't leave their hotel room because they're too fucked up um maybe they had an argument with their spouse like marital family shit or maybe you know they just didn't get to the airport on time and they missed their flight but usually those are the main reasons why djs will be like oh my god i'm so sorry you know my voice is broke my finger doesn't work anymore it's usually one of those type of excuses and fest and clubs kind of you know acquiesce to it as well and it'd be oh we'll, we'll reschedule for another time but for a festival to come out and say why they this guy isn't playing and actually state the reason why and say that they requested a private jet and that's abhorrent this almost feels like virtue signaling because let's be fair i hate models you know, not my favorite DJ. I'm not going to ever go and see him play anywhere. But from the clips that I've seen him perform at, people seem to like what he does. He also puts on a hell of a show. He's there topless with his face mask on, moving from left, right to left, jumping on the table and stuff. He gives people a show. one of the most popular um djs within the i wouldn't even call what he plays techno but within like the edm space he's super super popular and if he's if he's that popular i would imagine his request his wants his needs his riders his you know things that he needs to do a gig or to get to a gig it's probably well known it's not a surprise that when it was concerned certain gigs in certain locations he might need certain ground transport he might need a certain level of ground transport he might need a certain level of hotel a certain drink on his rider certain flights this might be something that everybody kind of knows of the business so for this festival to come and be like, oh my god you requested a private jet it smells a bit fishy because how did you not know this guy flies like this and this is how he likes to get transported to his gigs is it a bit crazy probably is it not the most environmentally decision in, in the world probably not but i would have i would say a festival by default probably shouldn't exist if you're into saving the environment right if you really are into that whole oh the earth is warming up like a fucking kettle maybe don't put on a fucking festival because regardless of what you do there's nothing that you can do to ever limit whatever carbon emissions that you are trying to limit by not giving this guy a private jet just give the guy a private jet unless unless he did other things in the background that pissed them off and then they're like you know what get fucked you and your private jet, you can stick it up your little bony ass. Maybe something like that happened. But I feel like just airing him out like this is it's a bit poor taste. It's a little bit in poor taste, you know? It's a little bit in poor taste. But again, you know, French people, they don't give a shit, you know? When you piss a French person off, they're going to go right to the end to fucking embarrass you. So maybe this is part of it. Who knows? Let's read the article here. No artist has ever taken a private jet to come and play at Le Bon Fer Festival. <laughs> i love how they were shocked by it but to be fair this is a false statement because how about if a dj paid for their own private jet to get there you know they're saying no other artist no other artist has taken one maybe they mean they haven't paid for one but maybe somebody's gone there with one it continues this is highly polluting this highly polluting means of transportation consumes 50 times more co2 than a train it's ecological economical 
social aberration that we systemically ref- oh fuck off what kind of festival is this they want you to get there by horse and carriage they want you to play a le bon air and they want you to get there by what in like they want you to carpool or something this guy's one of the most famous djs in the world why would he get in a fucking train to go to a festival in marseille are you insane get me the fucking jet or send me on my way give me half of my fucking money and let me go what the hell is this about huh in a statement sent to resident advisor i hate models agent described le bon air's communication as sad and disappointing i agree this is highly unprofessional i'm not going to lie part of me would like it if more clubs were honest about why they didn't why the person didn't come to play it's like one time when i found out um this one gig i was meant to go to no it's one i was meant to go see ricardo villalobos play one time maybe it was at fabric or something and um he didn't turn up right ricardo villalobos and i think at that time i wasn't aware because i was a fan of ricardo villalobos but for his productions for his dj sets on youtube i'd see for him just being a bit of a maverick and a bit of a fucking rock star behind the fucking decks but i hadn't known of the legend of ricardo villalobos in the club when he plays so i went to go see him play at fabric i think one time he didn't turn up and then you know speaking to guys there while i'm in the queue while i'm in the toilet about to do a bump or whatever they, they're telling me oh shit no the this is quite standard. Ricardo Villalobos will sometimes not turn up because he just gets too fucked up the night before. And um, one particular guy told me a story about Ricardo Villalobos turning up to a gig somewhere. I don't know where it may have been, allegedly, let's say. And he was so fucked up that they had to literally hold him up to play. Like he was literally falling over all the place. And then there came a point where they swapped him with somebody else. Um, and I don't think some, I don't think they could see, I don't know what club it was, but they swapped him with somebody else. No one could see the booth. So they didn't know that he wasn't actually there. He was actually sleeping on the ground. Then he woke up after like four hours, a little bit of a kip and he continued playing. So, you know, someone like that, you'd imagine has probably canceled a ton of gigs in their career. So I think as a, as Bantz, as part of some law, as some, you know, nice bit of like, you know, off, office pub chat. I would I wouldn't mind it if a club was actually honest and say, you know what, this person didn't turn up because they got too fucked up. This person didn't turn up because they got arrested by the police <laughs> for some assault or something. I mean, like, I would actually like it if they were a bit honest about why people don't turn because it happens a lot in the DJ world. A lot. You see someone, you you buy tickets to go see someone perform. You get there, and then literally, you know, and the and the worst thing, especially in London, because clubs nowadays are really struggling to get people to go to clubs, and you know, ticket prices are through the roof, and people are just not going out anymore. London London clubs are notorious for not letting you know that somebody isn't going to turn up until like an hour before they're set on hour before the club opens so maybe you're somebody like myself who you know you buy your ticket like usually I don't really check the thing all the time I've already got my ticket I kind of know when they're going to play or I know I'm going to get there so I just get there and then I don't realize until maybe I check my phone when I'm there that oh this person's cancelled so the, the club and the DJ themselves are in cahoots and they announce it as late as possible so nobody refunds or something. It's super fucking annoying. So part of me kind of likes what Le Bon Air did here. Air the guy out. Fuck you. You're not getting a private jet. We're like an environmentally, you know, cautious fucking festival. You knew what the deal was when you signed up with us, blah, blah, blah. And now you're asking for a private jet. Go fuck off. But I also think it's kind of poor taste, especially if you're in the business, to be airing out somebody. I mean, it's, it's a bit stinky. <clears throat> but let's continue. Um, in a statement sent by a resident advisor, I Hate Models agent describes Le Bon Air's communication as sad and disappointing. They said that it was always his intention to cover the full cost of the jet and they only asked for the festival to cover the cost of the airport transfers. But that's a problem though, isn't it? I'd imagine the airport transfers in that in such a small region like that would probably be quite expensive. That's That's probably the issue. Probably the money side of it. Because a lot of people that do festivals, when I read interviews with them, festivals for the most part like unless they're like big commercial ones people are basically doing it for the love of the game they're not doing it to make money festivals rarely make money there's too much you know stuff that goes into making them work <clears throat> so when they're doing them they're doing them literally for the love of the game so they don't probably have any extra bits of cash left to get you a fucking uh, you know airport transfer it's whatever flight they can get you whatever accommodation they can get you and that's it like there is no other you know adjustments that can be made um it continues as I, uh, as I Hate Models had another gig in Germany, the same night as a festival, it was agreed that we would manage transport with a buyout, the statement explained. So we, would, so we worked on a solution of a private jet as it was the only option that would ensure he arrived in time for a set in Marseille. We never asked the festival to cover any of the cost, not to book anything. We took the private jet option because it was the only option for I Hate Models to arrive on time for a set at Le Bon Air. 
He's also he was very looking forward to play for his fans and didn't want to let anyone down, even if it meant he had to pay for the private jet himself. He also offered to rebuy the CO2 emis- <laughs> emissions to make up for his own cost. Starting on Friday, LeBron Air takes place. Da, 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 da. Mama mia. So essentially, the truth is somewhere in the middle. Most likely, there's a lack in communication or a breakdown in communication between Le Bon Air and I Hate Models team in terms of what the details were between the fucking private jet. I personally think, most likely, I Hate Models team did cheekily request this very, I'm assuming, social, environmentally conscious festival for a private jet. I think they did. They probably don't remember because I think when you're I Hate Models, right? Let's just check his RA. When you're someone like I Hate Models, you probably have a gazillion gigs a year, probably in the month. He probably doesn't even know what the names of the festivals are, let alone what the theme is. So most likely they had no idea what the festival was. They probably didn't remember. And they just, re- and they just cheekily requested, hey, can you get us a private jet? Because he's currently in... I mean, they'd prefer to get him there early and then maybe get him another gig somewhere else because, you know, management team wants to like get the most out of him so they can get a nice commission. And then they just, you know, unfortunately asked the wrong festival at the wrong time. And then they let them know, hey, go fuck yourself. Because look, you know, he's booked and busy. He's all over every... Look, in June, look how many countries he's playing in. In June alone, he's in France, uh, Munich, Glasgow, Stockholm, Venice, Paris. Yeah, so all, look at his, all those countries. France, Germany, England, Sweden, Italy, uh, Romania, Germany again, Spain, Netherlands, Holland, Serbia, Belgium, Ibiza. Yeah, there's no way he knew or remembered or their team remembered what festival it was. So they just cheekily requested it. Then the festival let them know, you can go fuck yourself. So both people are in the wrong, I think, for the most part. But I also think this is probably indicative of the level of fame and the level of DJs that are at the moment. There are DJs now at the moment who most of you have probably never heard of who are flying around the country in private jets to go play for hordes of thousands of sweaty white people every other weekend or every weekend. And they're making bank doing it as well. And the music, you probably don't even like it. That's the funny thing about DJ World. It's just like, it's so fucking odd and it's so weird. It's so big. It's so broad. And it seems to be a never ending amount of money. Unfortunately, at this professional level, when you're like, I hate models level and you got a million gigs a month, you probably do need a little bit of something, you know what I mean? To just make you feel alive because it probably just ends up feeling like a never ending rave, you know, one after the other into another hotel, into another Uber, into another plane, sitting down, into another green room, more fucking nonsense club talks, more somebody, oh, what's your new production, track ID request, green room, another line, some groupie asking this, this, that, losing your wallet, like it's just a never ending thing, so you probably need something just to keep you going, just to keep you going. Another person said, I had the same experience. He drank like a bottle and a half of Jägermeister. He sounds like a rock star to me. And then got dragged out of the stage by the security because he was already one hour in the slot of the next DJ. At the beginning of his set, he was nice, but the more drunk he got, the more fucked up it got. When I went home, I hate models was arguing with the security since he wanted to go back on stage. I don't know about you, but if that was me and I went to see someone play and they drank half a bottle of Jägermeister, They then took up an hour of the next DJ slot. Then had to get physically dragged off the stage by security, kicking and screaming. I'd be a fan of theirs for life. (laughs) I'd be like, wow, you definitely were worth my £30 entry ticket. You've given me a show. I got to dance to you at the beginning when you were good. And then when you got to the end, you got yourself super drunk to a point where you had a fight with a security guard. I'm I'm into that. I'm not going to lie. I'm into that. Another one says, I've seen him at a festival and club nights in the US and Europe, and he's just inconsistent. Head of a producer, but he just doesn't have the guarantee to throw a good party every time he plays. Pair that with his rising popularity and therefore worse crowd, the rising ticket prices, I often have better options. But the problem here, and the reason why he's getting the big money, this sentence here, hell of a producer. He makes songs that people love. And they just can't let go. Even though he he might be a piece of shit. Even though he might be inconsistent. Even though he might be a drunk. He might be a drug addict. He might be whatever he might be. He, He makes songs that just touch people in a way that they cannot let go. And that is, ladies and gentlemen, the power of music. The power of music.